Since the novel coronavirus first appeared in Wuhan, China in late 2019, it has spread across the world. Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses common among many species of animals, including humans. There have only been two other coronaviruses that have been known to be deadly. The Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, known as MERS virus, that caused severe respiratory problems, and the CDC estimated that three out of four of every 10 patients infected with MERS had died. Another one is the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS. Now that had an average death rate of around 10%, with older people being the most vulnerable. Viruses can spread from human contact with animals. Scientists think MERS, for example, started in camels, and they suspect that SARS started with civet cats. As for human-to-human -human transmission, often it happens when someone is within three feet of the infected person. How does a virus spread? There are plenty of ways. It could be a sneeze, a handshake, or sexual contact to name a few. Then there's our habits, washing our hands, not touching our face. Even the climate may play a role in determining how far and how fast an infection spreads. Scientists have summed up how far an infection can spread with a number. It's called r naught. A number greater than one indicates it'll grow. Less than one indicates the outbreak will die out. Scientists determine the number with a formula that brings together all the environmental and biological factors. This is how it looks in reality. An infection is introduced to a human, from an animal, let's say. The bigger the r naught number, the more people a virus can infect. So an r naught of 2 means that patient 0 will, on average, infect two other people, who in turn can infect another two people, and so on. An infection like measles sits higher up the spectrum, with an r naught of between 12 and 18. At the lower end is something like Ebola, with an r naught number of 1.5 to 2.5. And while the flu varies from year to year, one study reports it averages to 1.2. But as various factors change, so too does the r naught. Take SARS. When it first emerged, SARS spread rapidly with a high r naught. But people were only contagious once symptoms started showing. Once people were informed about the symptoms, they started coming to the hospital earlier. People could check themselves into hospital before infecting other people, pushing the r naught number below 1. When a virus spreads, the number of people who are infected can quickly rise. This sharp increase can overload the healthcare system with sick patients who need intensive care. One solution is to increase the healthcare system's capacity, whether that's by building hospitals, training additional doctors, or buying more equipment. But that takes time and resources, which countries don't always have during an epidemic. Another option is to slow the spread of the virus, something experts call flattening the curve. Get the curves of outbreaks, you know, they go big peaks and they come down. What we need to do is flatten that down. That would have less people infected. That would ultimately have less deaths. This is done by relying on people in the community to use protective measures to help slow the spread of the virus. The goal is not necessarily to reduce the overall number of cases, although that is often a positive side effect, but rather to spread the cases out over an extended period of time. This means the healthcare system will be able to treat critical patients as they come in and better cope with the strain that outbreaks place on the medical system. Most of the people with the novel coronavirus aren't dying. Symptoms start out like the flu with coughing, fever, and shortness of breath. And most healthy people's immune systems are able to fight off the virus. But the disease can be deadly to people who have weakened immune system, like older adults, and those with pre-existing medical conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and lung disease. Their bodies have a harder time combating the virus. These are the ways COVID-19 can turn deadly. Pneumonia. COVID-19 is a respiratory disease, meaning it starts and typically ends in the lungs. Infected lungs fill with fluid, making it difficult to breathe, so oxygen can't get to the rest of the body, which can lead to death. Sepsis. The fight between the virus and the immune system may cause collateral damage throughout the body. Sepsis occurs when your body essentially overreacts to an infection. This out-of-control immune response can cause more damage than good and ultimately end in organ failure and death. Contact your doctor right away if you experience any COVID-19 symptoms and you've possibly been exposed to the virus. Limiting transmission between individuals is vital to help contain the outbreak. So here's what you can do to protect yourself.
Health experts agree that you should wash your hands regularly, thoroughly as well with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Don't forget your thumbs. Don't forget underneath your nails. If soap and water aren't available, you can use a hand sanitizer, but make sure that it's at least 60% alcohol. Do avoid close contact with anyone who is coughing or sneezing. What you're trying to do is avoid the airborne droplets that can spread the disease. Avoid touching your face at all. We do this hundreds of times a day. Avoid touching your face, but especially with unwashed hands, as the virus can enter your body through your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. If you do cough or sneeze, don't do it into your hands. Instead, use the crook of your elbow or use a tissue. Unless you're already sick, don't wear a mask. This is important. Wearing a mask can actually increase your risk of getting infected if you wear that mask improperly. Individuals do have an important role to play here, but society-wide measures are also gonna help stem the global spread of this virus. While affected countries have used a range of responses, containment efforts can be effective here. The lockdown of the entire city of Wuhan is thought to have helped slow the initial spread of the virus, and that bought valuable time for preparations elsewhere. Since then, large-scale quarantines have been used in some of the worst affected areas in the world. I should point this out, that large quarantines have not really been used in the United States for decades. The world has changed a lot since then, so it is hard to know just how effective these quarantines would be today. Restricting large gatherings of people may also help prevent the transmission of this virus. Early detection of cases through testing, that's the key. And some countries have taken it to the next level. For example, in China, they quickly deployed thermal monitoring technology to record temperatures. And in South Korea, they pioneered further innovations like drive-through testing. From providing emergency resources and investment to building infrastructure at speed, governments around the world now are working to contain and then mitigate this outbreak. And the vast majority of people who contract the virus do recover. So while novel coronavirus and the anxiety about it continue to spread, remember, there are things that can be done to fight back.